Hey there, welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting. I'm Nicole and this is episode 18. You can find me as Prof Pearl on Ravelry and as Prof Pearl on Instagram. All the links for the things that I discuss and notes will be in the description bar below. So I'm on my porch. I'm not sure if you can hear the birds in the rain. If you're new to this podcast, I live in Oregon. I'm a math education professor, which is Prof Pearl, like where that came from and Professor Pearl. And it's been a really like where I live in Oregon, it's been really rainy. And so it's just been really nice to sit on the porch in the kind of cool weather. And it's like 64 degrees Fahrenheit and listen to the rain. And I know sometimes background noise can be um, disruptive, but if you can hear the birds in the rain, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> uh, so today I'm wearing one of my favorite short sleeve sweaters. It might be the first short sleeve sweater I ever made and that's when I discovered I love wearing them. And it's a Sipola from by Caitlin Hunter and I knit it out of Madeline Tosh Light. I think this yellow color was winter wheat and maybe this pink color was espadrilles. I'm not sure. It's been a while. And I'm wearing it with shorts here. Yeah. Not, not the best view. <laughs> if you would have asked me when I started making this if I would have liked kind of the rolled collar here or the rolled edging, I would have probably said no, that I don't like that kind of style, but it, I actually really like it. And I like this sweater so much that someday I would really like to knit another one. The pattern has a long sleeve version with color work at the wrists and I think that would be just so amazing. So yeah, I'm wearing this with shorts. <laughs> Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. I, that's what I love about short sleeve sweaters. I can wear this in June with shorts and be really comfortable and look, I think, cute and um, I can also wear this in the fall and the winter with a shirt on underneath it and things like that. So I get a lot of use out of these. And I'm wearing rainbow earrings. There's this uh, Wednesday market in my town and there's a local maker made by my Micah. I'll put her Instagram handle here and link her shop below. So I bought it in person but she has an online store as well and she makes the most beautiful earrings. I have so many earrings from her and I just think it looks so good. These were our, these earrings are in celebration of Pride Month and I bought three pairs of rainbow earrings and I actually want more. <laughs> I just think they look so good um, with this sweater even. So, and it's just fun to outwardly show your support. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Okay. We have one finished object for today, and it is a very exciting finished object. Petite souffle. Hold this up. What? So, we're gonna start. So this is my third test knit for Laura of Penrose Knits. I did the original souffle, which is out. The chunky souffle sweater, which I think will be released in the fall sometime. And then there's two test knits going on, the summer souffle and the petite souffle. And I knew I couldn't do both, so I applied only for one. And luckily I was selected. And it is this petite souffle. So I just finished it and it's blocked. Finished, it needs a button still. Okay, so a couple of details about the sweater. So the first is this yarn is beautiful. 
and Matilda picked it out. So Matilda saw my souffle and I asked her like, do you want to have a matching pink one with me? And she said no, she wanted a purple glitter one. So I went on the hunt for a purple glitter yarn and I found some options at Frankie Gray Fibers. And so I had Matilda look at the website and this is what she picked out. And the colorway is called Sweet Pea. I, when I knit with hand knit yarns, I like to alternate the skeins, meaning knit one row with one ball of yarn and knit a second row with another yarn. And some people like to use helical knitting. I have a tutorial on how I do it, which I really like because you don't change your beginning of round. It's super simple to do and you don't carry yarn up the side and it, it's, in my humble opinion, the best way to alternate yarn. And so I usually alternate yarn, but for some reason I didn't do that on this. And then I needed to switch colors and I noticed the balls of yarn were like a little different. You can see this part here is bluer than what's down here. So what I did is essentially, and you can kind of see it here in the middle section about here, I alternated yarn for about two inches. So I essentially faded from the one sort of dye lot into the other. And I think it turned out great. Like, yes, you can tell that this is a different color than what's down here, but it, it does so in a way that's faded and not like a harsh line. So, and until it loves it. So that's all that really counts. And yeah, so I'll link that tutorial below if you're interested. And one of the reasons why I think I'm so into the souffle is like I've knit three so far and there's going to be more is that with this, the, these designs that Laura's done, there's like just such little details that make it just above. Like, you know, I've got lots of sweaters that are circular yokes and top down and, um, but they don't necessarily have like little tiny touches that make it like very special. And I don't mean that in kind of a deprecating way, but I just, I mean it in a positive way of like why I like the souffles is that there's some boring stockinette knitting, like the body, which I need in my life, but there's also like little touches which make it interesting. Like this applied I-cord edging, and then there is a keyhole back. And this is where I said done in air quotes because I need to put a button on it. I'll show you the three buttons I'm gonna show Matilda. If I just said to Matilda, pick a button, I have no idea what she'd say, because she's got lots of ideas. When I finished this, she told me she wanted lime green numbers on it. And I was like, I'm not embroidering lime green numbers on this. So I went through my button stash today and I picked out three buttons that I will show her. And I will let her pick one of these for the buttons. So I picked out this pink butterfly. She likes butterflies a lot. So, and it is like a little bit much butterfly with a ruffle, but I'm also like, she's four and this is a glitter purple sweater that's variegated. <laughs> like we might as well just go over the top with the much. So this butterfly button I found in my stash. I bought some glitter buttons on Etsy a while ago and this is a pink glitter button. And we love glitter and it's a glitter sweater. So I thought why not offer a glitter button. <laughs> And I think that will look really nice with it too because there's pops of pink on it. And I did find a button that's very close to the color of the, of the sweater, which she might like. So those were the buttons I found in my stash today. And after I'm done recording this, I will show those to her and ask her which she wants me to sew on. And then the sweater will be officially done. Although I'm counting it done for this podcast. So yeah, um, the little details like the ruffle, that's the sort of the iconic signature of the, of the souffle. And just when I had Matilda try the sweater on before I decreased and did the cuff. So basically I want to know like where the sleeve link was the sleeve length long enough. I hadn't cinched it in yet. So like with the decrease round and this and she was really sad she like was like my sleeves are too big and i was trying to explain that these come in so once i tried it on with it done she was really excited that the sleeves fit she was really upset that the sleeves were really packy <laughs> um so for the edging 
or the bind off. I did a tubular bind off and I would say for the first time, second time. I've done sewn bind offs or what is it called, the Italian bind off. And one of the things I like about test knits is I feel like I'm always learning something new. And so in the testing group, some people's bind offs were a little tight, a little snug. And I did notice that my sewn bind offs are not extremely stretchy as like other stretchy bind offs, but I really liked the look of it. And I remember doing a tubular bind off at some point and the Italian or the sewn bind off, I have it memorized. It's essentially a Kitchener stitch, which I also have memorized. And the tubular, there's like one step that's different from Italian bind off, but it's like pretty much really close. And so I thought, I'll try this. And I was like, I really like this a lot. I think this is gonna be my new go-to a tubular bind off. It just is, it has that really nice finished look where the stitches sort of just like fade, but is, for, for me, it's stretchier. Essentially, there's, the difference is it's just like the Italian sewn bind off, but you do one extra step that sort of makes a more of a, like a, a tube and those stitches that roll over. So the other kind of beautiful finishing touch is this folded hem, which I mean, just, it's so beautiful. It's just, you know, is it a little bit longer to do a folded hem than a traditional bind off, like with ribbing? Yes. Same thing, does it take a little bit longer to do a tubular bind off than just a regular stretchy bind off that you might do? Yeah. But it's totally worth it because you're making this handmade thing that turns out gorgeous with like just really really nice details like slowing down like that is just sort of really beautiful so i just i love this so much so i used three full hanks of yarn for it and that includes two swatches two large swatches and I purchased four. So I have a whole extra hank of this left over. And I've been going back and forth about what I'd like to do with it. I thought one option would be to knit a pair of socks because this is DK Sparkle. Like how amazing would socks be in this? Beautiful. And so that's one option. Another option I thought is I could buy more of it and like Obviously, like hand dyed yarn, the dye lots always kind of vary anyway. So the one extra one could be the ruffle. And then the extras I buy could be a version for me because Laura just released the summer souffle, which is obviously a summer sweater that you could do in a cotton wool blend. But you could also do it in the fall with a DK yarn that's 100% merino like this and sparkly. And I was thinking I could be matchy match like matchy match with Matilda, which would be so cool. Since she picked out this color, I could just do a matching one with her. And so I've been playing around with that idea. But then I thought, do I actually, I don't wear, the glitter is not showing up here, but this beautiful color is also glittery. Like do, do I need to be doing that? I don't know. And so then I thought, well, maybe that extra skein, okay could go towards a prize um, because I have three make-alongs here. So, you know, I need some prizes, so it could be a prize. So anyway, that's the, I don't know what's gonna happen to that extra intact skein, but it's gonna be something special. <laughs> Since I'm going on about the souffle, on this channel and on my Instagram, I'm going to be hosting a more souffle make-along that starts on June 15th and it's gonna be a casual make along for two months from June 15th to August 15th. And by casual, I mean, if you have a souffle whip, like you've already cast on a souffle, come to our make along together. Like let's do this together. So whips are allowed. And I'm gonna cast on a new one on June 15th or June 16th. But yeah, so Obviously you can cast on on June 15th if you want when it starts, but whoops are allowed. And I think I'm gonna do it so that like there's no pressure to finish a, a finished object, 
but um, so I'll just have sort of like I think like a, a chatter thread and Ravelry for where people can share finished objects and also chat and any sort of comment in there will be an entry for prizes and also on Instagram with the hashtag more souffle please. I'm going to do an Instagram kind of live party. I received some messages um, over the past few days about the make along and some people have asked for me to provide some yarn suggestions. So I'm going to do some research on some budget friendly options here in the US that might be nice to use for the summer souffle. I actually have no idea what kind of souffle I am going to cast on for this make along. I know there will be one. I did purchase the summer souffle pattern and so on the day after release I think and I think it might still be on sale now if you're interested and it's so there's a part of me that wants to go through my stash and make that happen and then there's another part of me that wants to buy more new mohair and do a mohair version <laughs> so anyway let me know if you're going to participate in the souffle make along and I will put a premiere up here on YouTube watch out for that so you can come to the live if you want about the live is I wanted to do the live on the first day of the make along June 15th but I realize that's a Wednesday and it's really hard for me to step away from Matilda on Wednesdays. So I think that I'm going to need to do the live on Thursday, the 16th, the day after the make along starts. And so on the live, I'm going to share some options of like souffles I will be making during the make along. And I also am hoping to share um, some souffle recipes, like to eat souffle. <laughs> See if I have one made that day. And um, yeah, I'm just hoping to chat souffles with you and hear what you're doing and yeah, just kind of have a conversation around the souffles we're making. All right, let's go to whips. Okay, so I really thought that all I would have to show this podcast is that souffle because it was a test knit and I really needed to get it done. But I do have some other knitting to show you and I love it, the knitting I have. The rest is just like little tiny bits of progress, but I'm really enjoying it. So this is a Musselberg or a Musselboro hat. And it is in the colorway Puddle Jumper from Arkansas Yarn Company. I had purchased a Sock, so Sock Society box. Just side note, I have regretted not getting subsequent boxes because the this was the April colorway Puddle Jumper, beautiful. And then May was a beautiful pink color called Cherry Blossom. I didn't get regretted and then I was like okay I'm not gonna get the next one because pink it's been done there's not gonna be another pink and then the next one was this beautiful yellow and I love yellow and kind of lemon theme so oh, one of my stitch kind of stoppers came off I bought these at the Rosa yarn crawl or by tulip they're these tulips and so I'm just always dropping stitches so Okay, so, oh, this Progress Keeper, it is a stack of books because this hat is part of the Books and Beanies Make Along co-hosted with We Share Needles. And Maddie sent me like a surprise, well, it wasn't a surprise because she told me it was coming, but I didn't, it was a surprise because she sent me a pair of socks and like gifts in the mail and I was not expecting that. And she sent me a bunch of Progress Keepers, like, some pink glittery ones and a cherry blossom one from her sock society box and and then she made this i think and it's a stack of books and i just thought this has to go on my books and beanies now so right where, where i podcasted last was here and so you know it's not a lot of progress but i mean in addition to my testament so i was really happy and i have to tell you this 
I understand the Musselburg or Musselboro obsession. Like, this is my first Musselburg. And, I, you know, I see a lot of people like Kay from the K Crazy Sock Lady and Kristen and Maddie from We Share Needles. I just, I mean, everybody makes these Musselberg hats, you know, there's thousands of projects of them and people are really into them. And I mean, I thought it's a nice hat. I didn't know what I didn't know. It, I actually like it better than a sock. Hear me out here. <laughs> I'm gonna use this whole ball of yarn, like this whole ball. There's not gonna be any waste. That is so exciting. I am thrilled. Like I just, I know people do scrappy things. I have a scrappy make along on the channel going on. Um, I've made scrappy socks. Like we like our scraps, but I, there's something very refreshing to take your yarn and use it all up and, and it's gone, it's done. And there's not waste and you're not stashing it somewhere else now. I don't know, I just, I'm very into this idea of like, and then I'm using this whole skein, like just thrilled about it. The other thing that I'm loving is it's even, it's hard to believe, but it's even more mindless than a sock. Like a sock is mindless therapeutic knitting. And this is actually more mindless than a sock because you do your interesting little decreases and it's tons and tons of tube. And I guess I saw this, but I just, it, to me, it looked like just so much work, like you're knitting this giant tube. And perhaps it is a lot of work, but I just, I don't know. I just, I understand the hype. I really do. And this is the first, but not the last. I'm loving it. And I'm keeping this, oh, in, I'm keeping this in my bag that I purchased at the Rosie Yarn Crawl. It's an Earl Grey fiber bag. This is like a cork bottom. And also on the Rosa Yarn Crawl at the Starlight News Society about this really cool pin that says Sip Sip Knit. And I'm going to do a Sip Sip Knit segment today. So um, anyway, just so much joy, like just so much joy. I almost like don't want to work on it that much because I just want it to last. It's just so nice to just have something so readily mindless. And I'm just really loving that. Okay, one last thing I wanted to say about the Musselberg is that I really struggled the first time I cast on a Musselberg with two things. And the first time I cast on a Musselberg, I actually ended up ripping it out and using the yarn for something else. So um, this is my second attempt at a Musselberg. So my first time casting on a Musselberg, the first thing I struggled with was the gauge. I cast on with needles that I would knit a sock with, which is, I mean, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with that, but it just wasn't good because you knit your socks at like kind of a dense gauge for your feet. This is something going on your head and you want it to be a little bit drapier in my opinion. So you should definitely size up your needles. Like even though you're using a sock yarn, you shouldn't necessarily use a sock needle or like the size sock needle that you would use. So, I mean, it's probably really obvious to other people, but that was like kind of a big thing for me. The second thing I really struggled with was the cast on. The first time I cast on a Musselberg, I used the pinhole cast on, and I used the tutorial, which was an excellent tutorial from Very Pink Knits, Very Pink Knits. And it was an excellent tutorial, and the pinhole cast on worked I did not enjoy it and I found it to be really fiddly. And so for this hat, I used the disappearing loop cast on method and I loved it. And so if I knit another one, I'm gonna do the disappearing loop cast on instead of the pinhole cast on. And the reason why I wanted to share that is for the books and beanies make along, the Weisher Needles has the finished object thread and Ravelry. And of course you can participate on Instagram. But in my Ravelry group, there's a chatter thread. And I was reading through the chatter thread and someone in there was asking like what people use for their cast on. And they had shared that they use the 
the pinhole cast on. And I was thinking to myself, I remember feeling that same way after the pinhole, which is like, do people use other things? So anyway, I would love to know, I'd love to know like what cast on you use from, if you're a muscle bird knitter, like what are your cast ons? Like what are you using? My next whip, I'm keeping in this bag. It's a summer sock camp bag 2021. It's 2022, but this was, last year was my first time participating in summer sock camp. I think last year was the second year that Crazy Sock Lady did, um, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady did the summer sock camp. And I bought this very cool bag. It's so cute and it's very sturdy. And this year I was not quick enough to get one of the bags. I really wanted one of the s'mores bags that was for summer sock camp. And that didn't work out for me. I was like, yeah, that's good because this is still a great bag and I should be using it. So what I did is I got a pin, that's a summer sock camp 2022 and I put it on my 2021 bag. And that's my summer sock camp bag. And so of course I had to cast on a pair of socks for summer sock camp, like, of course. I just love make-alongs all of them. Okay. I recently, with my husband Kyle, we made a video last weekend where we showed a bunch of our single socks. So if you've watched that, if you've watched that video, you may have seen the sock already. But I have cast on and I've made it past the heel flap, the heel turn, and of the gusset, I'm just cruising now. And I am loving this sock so much. Like, do I have the tag? I visited my friend Brenda in Texas this past October in the fall. And we went to a knitting circle, the Knitting Cup, which I did an interview with the yarn store owner there. And she has a wall of yarn, like kind of like a wall in her store of Texas dyers. So you can see there's a sticker that says Texas made. And this yarn is, the brand is called Savvy Skeins. And it is a 80-20 superwash um, It's fingering weight, obviously 100 grams. The colorway is called Surfer Girl. I am not a surfer girl, meaning I don't consider myself a surfer. I have surfed. I loved it, the times I've gone surfing. Actually, I even went surfing when I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll pop it in the picture. We'll see how brave I'm feeling. <laughs> so I love the ocean. Um, I think I grew up in the Midwest and so we always like did stuff on the water. We lived on a lake. Um, you know, so I love being on the water in the summer, but there's just really something magical about the ocean. And I feel like it's such a privilege to live near an ocean now and we try to go as much as possible. And so when I found this colorway called Surfer Girl, it just it made my heart kind of warm up this fall and I knew immediately I would save it for summer sock camp. And so, and it, this is accurate. Like this is the, like it's a super accurate reflection on the camera. It's not blown out. It, this is the color. And this is gonna sound dramatic, but it is maybe my favorite colorway ever which that's kind of extreme to say when I love pink so much, but it's just, especially for a pair of socks, it's just, I love it. And so that's why it's vanilla sock because I just needed to embrace how amazing this color is. And it's on, and, it, and then I love the color so much. And then it's on my favorite base, which is an 8020. So anyway, this is a magical, just it's a magical experience. <laughs> Okay, I have to say this, um, which is, I love make-alongs. I think it's so fun to be part of a community. And maybe the thing I love more than make-alongs is when you can do like multiple make-alongs at a time. So this pair of socks is going to be a part of three make-alongs. So it's going to be part of summer sock camp from Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady, and I will enter it for prizes in the finished object guides for the nine inch cabin, because I'm knitting it on nine inch circulars. 
So I also am going to enter this in um, a knit along called Socks and Stocks. The hashtag is Socks and Stocks Cal. I'll put the hashtag here. So Knit Knack Zach, who has a podcast, which I'll link below. I have watched all of his vlogmas. Um, yes, it's a it's a great make along idea because who doesn't love socks and their Birkenstocks? Like <laughs> it's great. So these are entered and that make along. So that's two make alongs. And the third make along is one I did last year as well, and that is sock bingo from Shop Yarnia, which is a yarn store in New Jersey that I've never been to, but I love their podcast. So I'll link it below and you can go on their website and you can download a bingo card. And like last year when I did it, one of the bingo spaces was like nine in circulars or um, color work. And you just, and you can color in the spaces. You get to make five socks by Labor Day, which essentially is like two and a half pairs. My video with my husband Kyle was like that we basically, we think we showed 12 single socks that we have. So we have a lot of unfinished socks. And I found one after I posted it on YouTube, I found another single sock that I didn't show on that video. So technically there's 13 single socks. So sock bingo make along was probably really great for people like me because there's no requirement for a pair of socks. It's just to finish socks, five socks. So I could theoretically kind of switch some of my energy to the sock bingo to finish some pairs of socks if I so desire, but I, I know I'm going to cast some more socks, even though I have 12, 13. Well, I don't personally have 13 because Kyle has some in there. So I don't know. I'm at seven or eight or something, but I'm going to cast on more pairs because my friend Anna from Zebra Yarns She's going to be doing a really fun make along about socks in July. It's July 1st through July 4th, where you use her self striping yarn and you knit a pair of socks in four days. And a lot of times from July 1st through July 4th, like you're spending like, you know, you're doing picnics, family time, and it can be a really good time to get some knitting in. And it's like a very mindless knit sock. So it might be a good time to do that. And I've never knit a pair of socks in four days. I was thinking about it. Like it's theoretically like I think possible for me because like this sock, if you wanted to do it like a pair of socks in four days, you'd have to do this in one day, like the cup and leg in a day, which I could do the heel, like the whole foot, like the heel turn and the foot and the toe in a day. I mean, and then you'd have to repeat that for the next two days. Like, I do think it's physically possible. I've never done it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try. And I was like, the worst that happens is I don't finish it. And who cares? <laughs> all right. So obviously you can tell I'm enjoying all the make-alongs for <laughs> summer <laughs> with summer socks. And I would love to know, like, what, like, what are your summer sock plans? Like, I just would like to know what your summer sock plans are and what summer sock make alongs are you participating in? Like, obviously, probably everybody's doing summer sock camp, but like, what else? And yeah, and, cons and you should consider triple dipping like me because it's really fun and why not? <laughs> okay, I am a human who has a lot of whips. I'm not going to show you them all, but I am going to show you the things I worked on since I last recorded. And so there's one last thing that I worked on since I last recorded. And you might be sick of seeing it, but it's my Radvent. And I'm actually, <laughs> last time I recorded, I was like, I won't necessarily keep showing you the Radvent because it's like a constant project. But here's what I, what I end up keep showing you is I'm legitimately excited about this thing. <laughs> okay. So I'm hosting on this channel, a make along called the Scrappy Sweater Along. And if you've got mini skeins of any kind, scraps, and you're making a sweater of any size, 
enter it. And there's Zooms. And it's really fun, I think. I had, it was probably the smallest group this last, this past week. And it was so fun though. I, um, I feel like I'm making friends and it's just, and the best thing for me personally <laughs> is it's motivating me. So I hadn't touched my Radvent in a while. And then I had the Zoom night for Scrappy Sweater Zoom. And I thought, okay, let me pull this out. And I ended up finishing this huge hem. So my friend Yvonne, who I met through this channel, and like she's participated in some make-alongs and is a professor too, she sent me these progress keepers she made. And they're just, are they not so cute? I just, it's like, I don't know. They look really fancy <laughs> and I love it. So I, when she sent that, I immediately, she finished the scrappy sweater for the scrappy sweater long. And so I immediately switched out my progress keeper and put this one in so I could think of her. So when I last recorded, this is where I was at. And I, it may not look like a lot, but that's a couple inches of twisted rib flat. Meaning I was crawling through the back loop on some of these rows. So I'm almost done. I've made such progress. Um, it's grafted together, there's the sleeves, big hem. I just have the button band left. And I haven't picked up stitches for it yet because I think I need to order a new needle. Because it's, I need a long size three needle. And my interchangeable sets don't go to size three. I'll just try it on so you can see. It doesn't try on really well with the, yeah. How good, how good is this? So I'm loving it, even though it's probably the longest I've ever worked on a sweater. <laughs> it's definitely the longest. I do want to knit another one of these in my lifetime, but when I'm done with this one, I'm going to need a break and I'm going to need to do a different scrappy sweater, but I, in my lifetime, will knit another one of these because it just, it's very, like, a very eclectic looking sweater. It shows off the mini skeins. It feels very comfy. I, I don't even have the button band on yet, but um, I'm loving it. I, you can tell on the bottom here, it's like flaring out a bit because I did a stretchy bind off. Oops. You can tell it's kind of flaring and I actually am pleased that it's flaring. I am going to need to block this and particularly this is going to need to block out a lot. And so I needed it to be stretchy. And, and this actually, this waistband will have some negative ease for my waist. And so it, when I'm wearing it, it won't be flared. It might look flared now, but it won't, it doesn't on my body. So if you're a new viewer, this is my countdown calendar of yarn from December, 2021. And it's from Stress Knits. And this is the Radvent Cardigan by Amber O'Brien. Very long-term project for me. And I'm just really loving the slowness of it. Even if it's kind of annoying to see this on every podcast. <laughs> so let's see here. Oh, one last thing I wanted to say about sort of like the sweater scrappy sweater make along is it's going into the fall and there's monthly zooms on the first Tuesday of every month but I wanted to welcome souffle sweater knitters too because if we're getting together on zoom for sweater knitting so I was thinking the first Tuesday of every month could be kind of a space for anybody making sweaters since I have two sweater make alongs going on in either make along because I've noticed some of the people who participated in the scrappy sweater make along are also participating in the souffle that came up this past zoom and I was like oh it's fun to talk about both right so I was thinking that would be anybody doing either of those make alongs can participate in the zooms and 
I post the information for the Zooms in two locations. One is in Ravelry and then the other is um, in my stories on Instagram. And I do it the day of just so that it's like the Zoom information isn't just out there for a long time. And so you can always email me too um, at Professor Pearl Podcast at gmail.com if you are interested in the Zoom information. It's really raining pretty good here. Kyle's inside working from home today and I said, it's really pouring and he's like, it's not pouring. I've become an Oregonian. Um, it's, it's just a nice rain. I don't know if I can hear it. Um, but it makes me feel really cozy, which for the Sip Sip Knit segment, I just thought I would get cozy and tell you about some of my favorite teas, which I haven't done in a while. I really need to drink water more, but I, and I have made an effort actually in the past week to drink water more, but I am a big coffee and tea drinker. So today with this tea here, I have David's tea, s'mores chai. And it's kind of cool and cozy and it just, for me, s'mores chai feels like a fall drink. But really I was thinking about it today and it shouldn't because we have s'mores in the summer with our campfires. So s'mores chai is the year round <laughs> tea. I have it in my favorite tumbler to have on the porch. So I like, I'll bring any of my, my cups, glasses onto the porch, but I do like it when I can have a cup that has like a lid for being outside because like bugs and things. But yeah, so I do like a tumbler. I bought this this spring. I'm always like, I shouldn't buy more mugs because like what I have is fine. Like I don't need more. Like what I have is great. Sometimes it's just very hard to resist something like cute. And this just gives me mermaid vibes, which makes me think about Matilda. It's my four year old who loves mermaids. And I just, yeah, so. It's a perfect size because it's not too big where my drink will get cold and then it keeps it pretty warm. So anyway, s'mores chai from David's Tea. It's not necessarily my, it is one of my favorites. It's just really hard to say what's my favorite tea from David's Tea, but it's, it's one of my favorites. So I'm really excited about my question for a sip sip mint today. So I thought for Sip Sip Knit, I would ask you a question. And I think it's funny. Hopefully you like my joke. What's your favorite tea? Maybe this is not as funny as I think it is, but I think it's cute because you can answer it any way you want. What's your favorite tea? You could talk about your tea, your T-E-A. Like s'mores chai or you know maybe just like a traditional earl gray but you could also interpret what's your favorite tea to be t-e-e -E. what's your favorite knit tea and <laughs> i can't wait to see your answers because i like both kinds of teas the kinds i drink and the kinds i wear and so yeah that's our sip, sip knit. Not very exciting, not a long segment, but actually very exciting because I can't wait to see your answers. I, you know, I think like people's enthusiasm towards socks and other things like this um, is how I feel about knitted sweaters and particularly short sleeve sweaters just because I love some. I just get so much use out of these. Now, I do get use out of my hand knit socks, but it's just something really special about wearing a garment you've made. And and without a doubt, short sleeve sweaters are, or short sleeve tees are like the thing that gets the most use in the wardrobe. So anyway, tell me about your favorite tee. <laughs> okay, 
there's a change of location here. My hair is looking. <laughs> Let me... All right, so there's a change of location here because I realized that I forgot to record my acquisitions, which would actually be fine normally, except that there's some epic, epic acquisition, acquisitions that I cannot skip this. I can't skip it. So the first, okay. The first acquisition I have is, I don't have everything here, but I have the best thing, which is Maddie from Weish Your Needles sent me a package and she made me socks. And it's my first pair of socks with this magic heel, and I totally want to try it. So cool. And they seem to fit really well. And this colorway, I don't know the name of it, but it's from Desert Vista Dye Works, which I know because she sent me a picture and gave me some options for hand knit socks. And I think they both had pink in them, but I remember this being like really vibrant, and I was like super pumped about it. And they like fit my feet super well and I think that these would be a really nice gift sock like this kind of heel and so anyway that's just so sweet I just it's like mind-blowing that you make friends on the internet through having a YouTube channel that knit, and they knit you socks I mean it's just so sweet and she sent me a bunch of other little goodies like this little thing and it has like a, like a kind of chapstick lip balm thing from a winery and like a bunch of progress keepers and stuff. So, so sweet. And it made my day. The shim. Very apropos, around the time that package arrived, my order from Kimber's Cozy Creations came and so Maddie is half of the We Share Needles podcast and so my We Share Needles podcast yarn came. So this, because it's mostly blue, I know is Maddie and she's like famous for movie knitting and I would say a lot of movie knitting, like meaning she gets a lot of knitting done in the movies when she goes. She must be a very speedy knitter. And this one is Whip It Out because Kristen is hilarious and she always says like whip it out for the whips, which is so cute. So I'm going to make socks with this. If you've watched my video with Kyle, you can see why I have so many single socks. There's just so much gorgeous yarn out there. I'm wish I like get excited and it was just really fun to support a dyer and my friends at the we share needle podcast like so good i mentioned that i missed out on getting a bag for summer sock camp i really wanted the s'mores one and i was like you know what it's just a bag what i can do instead since i didn't get it is just buy a bag from somebody else and i've been wanting to buy a bag from Georgiana at Stitching Plaza for a long time. It sounds ridiculous, but one of my reasons for not buying a bag for her up until this point is that she had too many choices. I get overwhelmed when people have too much good stuff and I can name like 10 bags of hers I want. <laughs> so I succumbed and I got this one which is the Disney Electric Parade. Ultimately, I decided on this fabric because just had really precious memories of the uh, electric parade at Disney, both as like a child with my family. It's been around for a long time. So I, when I went to Disney, my dad had been to Disney prior to like without me and he had told me about it. And I got to experience that with my dad who has passed away and, and I just, just special like, cause it's a memory. And then I got to experience being at the electric parade with my daughter and she was super excited about it. And so I just thought it was cool to have a bag that has those special memories. 
The next acquisition is I had requested a custom order for Progress Keepers from Tiddly Bakes. Um, Tiddly Bakes makes Progress Keepers that are food inspired and they are really detailed. And so I wondered, reached out to her if she could do soufflés for the more souffle manilong. So this is a chocolate souffle and a cheese and leek souffle. So good. So I definitely will, for the more souffle manilong post recipes for the chocolate souffle and the cheese and leek souffle on Instagram and my stories and also on Ravelry. And so these are the ones I purchased. And since she did a custom order for me, like she has it open for anybody. So if you want a cheese and leek progress keeper or a chocolate one or both, they're on her Etsy page, which I will have linked below. Okay. Last podcast, I discussed how I was featured for the Real Women in STEM for Pearls and Postulates, which is the yarn dyer that I love following and love math inspired yarn. And so I got a free set of yarn for being featured. So this is the Pearls and Postulates. I kept it wrapped because it's so cute. And came with a card. This one's me, but it can be any any of the dyers, any of the real women in STEM sets you would buy would come with a card about the career and different things. Look at this. So I got to have input on the colors, and so my input was pink and yellow, and then this that is what she created. This is a little bit blown out. It's more buttery in person. And so the main color, she named math education professor because her goal with this series, I think part of it is to like kind of describe different careers that women can pursue in STEM. And then this yellow color I got to name and I named it number line, particularly because during my sabbatical, one of my research studies was investigating children's created inventions and notation, both language and written notation for number lines. So for instance, some of the children, instead of writing negative one, they would invent zero one for numbers below. And so what they were doing was really equivalent to um, negative numbers, but they created their own notation when they were inventing it, which was kind of fun to investigate. Anyway, I'm rabbit holing. I won't talk about my research, but um, I'm really excited about this sock set. So, I mean, obviously it's not every day that somebody dyes yarn with you in mind. And so I wanted more than a sock set. And so I was able to purchase more than I did. And as if you've watched this podcast from the beginning, I mean, I have no idea. Just let me know if you have. <laughs> but. I first started the channel, one of the first make alongs I did was a love note, love knit along. I've knit five knit love notes. I love love notes. So I decided, since love notes are sort of like my work uniform or a love note with black pants, love note, skirt, then I wanted to make a math education professor color love note. So. I'm thinking I'm going to do this this fall when I go back to school in the fall when the new semester starts. I think it'll be a really perfect cast on. I'm really excited about that. I just left it in the plastic because I just love her logo. I just, it's so good. It's so good. There's more. I love a good make along. I love a make along. <laughs> make along. So there is another make along going on right now on social media and Instagram. It's called the Yarn Love, the Yarn Love Challenge. And there was swag, there was merch available. 
and <laughs> yeah so I love some pins so this is the hashtag yarn love which is the challenge I'm doing if you follow me on Instagram you'll see I've been participating every day and it's really fun I love I love those kinds of things where it's like a photo challenge with your yarn I just really love it so she's just gonna get one pin but look at this look at this happy sun hugging yarn ah oh, I just I love those like this logo the sun I, like so I, I'm really looking forward to putting these on some bags but I just loved the logos I think there was like four different logos I was like, you know what? I love vinyl stickers too. I love my mugs that I put them on. And so I got all four stickers and I'm gonna put them on my knitting notebook and my mugs. I mean, why not? It's so fun. So this one says yarn love, it's so cute. And this one's like a little hand with a taking a camera and like, or taking a picture. And then this phone or camera like where the lens is, is a yarn ball. And since it's a photo challenge, that's really cute. So it's like yarn date. Like I've got a date with my yarn. <laughs> and then there's the yarn. And of course, the very cute Happy Sun. So I don't know like what's gonna go on the notebook versus what's gonna go on a mug, but that's a lot of acquisitions. Um, a lot of happy mail. <laughs>this is the personal section. If you are only here for the knitting, there is no more knitting from this point forward. It's just me as a human, a friend, chatting about what's going on in my life. So thank you so much for checking the channel out and supporting our community here. So now for personal stuff. I'm going to tell you about um, what I finished reading and what I'm reading. So I just finished reading... I don't know, maybe not just, maybe like a week or so ago, I finished reading Vanishing Half. And I have to recommend it as a, for anybody to read. It's just, one of the things that's important to me as a reader is to learn about different perspectives. And the other thing that's important to me as a reader is to just be engaged in the story and the characters. And this does that. There's just a lot of complexities flashing from different points of time, different uh, perspectives of different characters. It's rich in a narrative. And I just, I, I, I would just recommend it. The book is about these two black young women who are twins who end up losing touch with each other because one of the twins decides to live her life as a white woman, like to like give up that part of her identity. And the book explores like the challenges that sort of fall out of giving up a piece of your identity. There's a transgender man in the story and this is taking place in the 60s and so you really get some insights into challenges and hurts that happen in that space and I just I would read it again. I recommend it. I almost did not record a podcast today because I wanted to finish my other book. <laughs> if you've been 
watching this channel for a while, which maybe you have if you've made it to this personal section. You know I love Sarah J. Moss as an author and I'm very into the series. And so I am, I was reading this the third book a while ago and I got distracted by reading other things and so I'm almost done. I have like 30 pages left and so I almost didn't record because I just want to finish this book. Like I'm recording this instead of reading. <laughs> this is the third series in the Court of Thorns and Roses series and the Court of Thorns and Roses series is a very fantasy perspective of a classic tale of Beauty and the Beast essentially but much like deeper and richer than that and I read the first book Court of Thorns and Roses three times and then the second book I just read very quickly the second book was so good I wanted to read it a second time but I had to know what happened so then I started this third book and it took some twists I didn't see going, which made the second and third book kind of, which made the second book shocking and hard. Uh, but I, I just, I cannot, I, I, all I wanna do is just read these books and nothing else. I, I need to do other things and read other books, like as a human, as a person, and I will. <laughs> I just, obsessed, obsessed, which is, as you know, I'm very obsessed because my very first sock design was Selena, who's not a character in this series, but in the other series I really like by Sarah J. Moss, the Throne of Glass series. Um, okay. So that's currently my reading situation. And once these 30 pages are done. I'm going to read the book that's part of the Books and Beanies now before the coffee gets cold. Just side note about that, Mal. You can read any book with any beanie, but there will be a book discussion about before the coffee gets cold. It's a short book, so complete opposite of a 700 page book there. <laughs> All right. After I last recorded, the day after I recorded, I did something that I've never, never done before, which is I met up with some women that I met on Facebook as part of like a adventure group. And <laughs> we did a sunset hike. So we did this trail called Tom McCall. And as the sun was setting, well, first we went to a taco truck and ate tacos that were delicious. And then we hiked this trail at sunset and it was epic you could see mount hood like you could see all these wildflowers as the sun was setting it was golden hour it was like it felt like i was where like heaven meets earth it just was a very majestic experience and so at the top of this foothill well it's not it wasn't a mountain it was just like a big foothill i would say we watched the sunset. I actually did a little bit of knitting on my painting up there. I brought my knitting with me, of course. <laughs> and it was just so beautiful. And then hiked down in the dark. And that's what was a first for me. Well, meeting, going hiking with people I don't know was a first. <laughs> and also hiking down in the dark. A lot of the women had um, headlamps. It's a good idea. I didn't want to buy a headlamp because I was like, what if I never do this again? Like, what if I never do a sunset hike again? So I had a little flashlight, <laughs> which worked fine, except that headlamps were probably a better idea because they had like hiking poles, like hiking sticks, like trekking poles for balance. There was a lot of poison oak where we were hiking. And so I was very conscious of this and I definitely touched poison oak. And I knew the second I touched the poison oak, and so I immediately did not touch anything around me. And I didn't touch anybody, anything, and I just kept this hand. This was the hand of the culprit. This was the hand. And as soon as I got down to the base of the mountain, I or the foothill, I just put lots of um, hand sanitizer on and 
tried to get the poison oak oil off me and I did not have a breakout. So I was really lucky. I for sure touched it and I, it was the kind of trail that I was like really glad I didn't bring Matilda on because there was poison oak everywhere and it was really essential on this little tiny trail that you did not touch the poison oak. <laughs> and Matilda's four, so if I would have brought her, she would have got poison oak. <laughs> Then the next day after that really epic experience, hiking at sunset and dark, my friend Jordan, well, she's my friend now, when she was younger, she was my student. I was a high school math teacher and and I that was in Illinois. And now we both live here on the West Coast and she lives in Seattle and she's a medical doctor now and like in her thirties. <laughs> and she came out to stay with me. She has a dog named Match and well her partner has a dog named Match and yeah so she brought Match and herself out and we just hung out and well, and they stayed at our house and Match is a golden retriever and the sweetest dog I've ever met in my life like I feel like this is must be how grandparents feel where it's like um come stay at my house and then go home <laughs> Cause I loved having match over at my house and then he went home with her <laughs> and so we just walked around town here had some wine tasting went to some parks with Matilda ate out at a pizza place which was uh, like has outdoor seating it's called honey pie it's really cool and we pretty much don't ever eat out pizza because we make a lot of pizzas at home but it was really fun to do that with Jordan um we just had like a really, really fun time together. And then last weekend, Kyle, Matilda and I went to Pacific City and it was very rainy. I think that's been in my time out here in Oregon, which I think this is my seventh year out in Oregon. This has been the rainiest June, May, June that I've ever seen. Now, people that have lived out here a lifetime are probably like, this is not the rainiest June Nicole, or, which is fine, but for me, it's so rainy. And even the beach, it was just super rainy. And like, of course it rains on the coast a lot, but usually there's like pockets you can go and there's like a sunbreak or something, but the, it, there was not, it was like 90 to hundred percent rain. So I would watch the weather and it's as soon as it was 30 to 40 percent precipitation we would head out so basically it worked out that in the mornings we could go to the beach and then in the afternoons we needed to stay in which was fine because we just we had a good time and there was beautiful beautiful starfish uh, i would say finding sea creatures is like matilda's favorite thing and then subsequently now my like my favorite thing to do and they're just, it's just wonderful to find the anemones, the, the crabs, the starfish, and to explore, and to see Matilda be a young scientist making observations, and it's just so cool being a fellowship, I love it. And then the food in Pacific City is just so good. And we ate terrible, you know, like lots of like fried food, like fries and burgers and lobster macaroni and cheese, but so good and yeah so we just it just felt like a vacation even though it's just an hour from home and it was really special so currently Matilda is preparing for a violin recital and a dance recital and unfortunately they're on the same day the violin recital got moved because some of the students from the violin studio like are in track so not this Saturday, not to, but like next Saturday until the has a violin recital and a dance recital. That is way more intense of a lifestyle than I like wanted us to live, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. And she's really excited about it. And being part of a dance has been really fun for me. The past like two weeks after dance class the, all the girls and the moms like do something after and so like for instance this Wednesday after dance class all the girls went to 
the splash pad. I'm going to play in the splash pad. It was in the 70s and sunny. <laughs> it wasn't raining at that moment. <laughs> and they brought their scooters. And after they went in the splash pad, they scooted around town on their scooters. And I would show you pictures, but they're not my children. <laughs> and then they went and got donuts together. It just was so fun. And so that's been a special thing. But now that we finally found this cool groove with like this dance group, like it, the dance season's coming to an end. And these girls are like a little bit older than Matilda. Like they'll be starting kindergarten next year. So like, I don't know if she'll be in another class with them. I don't know, but so I'm just trying to cherish this last sort of season for her violin recital. I think she's really excited about it. There's, there's some kind of local band that was playing by us practicing at my university that we could go see and so we, it was sort of like a marching band and so we went to go see it see them practice or do a performance it's not our university's marching band it's like some kind of i don't know why traveling marching band <laughs> um and so we went to go see it and matilda was like am i performing <laughs> it's like no. she thinks any kind of music thing we go to she's supposed to be performing at it <laughs> so i know that like it should be fun to see what happens at our violin recital. <laughs> and yesterday, uh, Matilda and I and Kyle, we went to the library and we all signed up for the summer reading program. So our library has an adult summer reading program in addition to a children's summer reading program. And it's just filling me up with joy. Our, li our library is just simply fantastic. The programming they have, like maybe every library is like this I don't know but ours is just there's little places that give me greater joy than the library <laughs> every time I leave there I just feel so happy and they just did this really neat thing for our library in addition to the awesome summer reading program they have this program that's sort of like a park passport so like you know like your town or your city might have like lots of like neighborhood parks They've put passports, stamps at the neighborhood parks. And there's a bunch of them, at least like 20 in my city. And you can go there and get a little stamp on, in your passport book for these like parks, these playgrounds, and then you can be entered for prizes. And I just think that's so awesome because it's like encouraging the kids to play outside. And anyway, so I'm really excited to do that this summer. And it's just fun because it's promoting something really awesome like being outside that's not just reading so oh when I was there at the library I picked up this book the surprising science of walking for wellness and joy one week at a time 52 ways to walk this is actually an interlibrary loan from Salem so this is actually from the Salem Public Library my library is not Salem I was doing some writing for you know, professor life stuff. And I was writing at a bookstore or coffee shop by me. It's like, it has new and used books and then it has tea and coffee and ice cream. It's like the cutest place and I love to write there. And so I was writing and in the corner of my eye, I saw this book that said 52 ways to walk and I opened it up and I wanted it. I wanted it and I was like, you don't need to buy another book request this from the library and one of the reasons why I wanted to buy it is that each chapter is labeled like week one week two week three and has a reason a way to walk like week one is walk in the cold week two is improve your gait week four is just one slow walk week six is take a muddy walk like just and the one chapter I, that I was reading, oh yeah, chapter 31, Walk Beside the Sea. Um, there was one about sort of, it was just, it was interesting timing because basically I had just read about the importance of walking near waterfalls and sort of like the positive and negative ions, how that actually can increase happiness <laughs> and I was reading about that and then I saw this book and I just had opened it up and it actually went directly to that chapter about 
essentially walking near water and positive ions and things like that. And I was like, I just want to read this. So I interlibrary loaned <laughs> instead of purchasing it because I just, I do want to purchase less books. It's something I, I've been doing for a long time. It's not that I'm opposed to purchasing books. You know, like I own this book, this Court of Thorns and Roses series book, but I just like using the library as much as possible, particularly for books that I may not read a second time. So this is a long personal section. Anyway, I don't really have any summer plans. Normally, you know, I have something like to look forward to in the summer, like I'm going here, going there, but I don't have anything like that going on this summer. But I'm thrilled about that. I'm thrilled to just read more, knit more. I've been doing gardening and just spend time with Matilda. And yeah, so I'd love to know what your summer plans are whether it's a specific book you're, you want to read or you're going to spend time near the water, let me know. I, yeah, I just, I would love to know what your summer plans are. And thanks so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you at the Souffle Live next week. And okay, if not, you can come to the Souffle Live even if you're not making a souffle, although you should make a souffle. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>